Bullet Club are wrestling's most iconic modern stable, and it's not even close. Formed in May 2013, the New World Order inspired group have conquered the planet. Their shirts are everywhere, and even if you've never watched a single New Japan show in your life, chances are you still know who they are. Naturally, Bullet Club's ranks have gone through major changes over the years, with a staggering 29 individual wrestlers passing through their ranks. Ranking them is difficult, but hey, let's give it a bash anyway. To make it easier, we'll exclude part-timers and one-offs like Jeff Jarrett and Haku. Wrestling ability plays a part, but we'll also be looking at these guys' tenure, accomplishments, how well they fit, and what they contributed to Bullet Club's legacy. With that in mind, I'm Andy from WhatCulture.com, and here is every Bullet Club member, past and present, ranked from worst to best. Number 19. Bone Soldier. Career loser Bone Soldier spent his tenure decked out in a crap Halloween mask and a pair of tracksuit bottoms hawked straight from the discount track. Not only did Boner look like a geek, but he wrestled like one too, with Kenny Omega famously dubbing him an intergalactic disaster in December 2016. Cut from New Japan just six months after joining the club, Bone Soldier is missed by nobody, not even his mum. Number 18. Leo Tonga. A big old unit at 6 foot 8 inches and 260 pounds, Leo Tonga is the third son of legendary hardman Haku to join the promotion, but he's still finding his feet. Tonga is greener than an envious Grinch. He's barely been wrestling a year and only debuted as a Bullet Club member last September. This makes it tough to gauge his potential, but he's very much on New Japan's bottom rung at the moment. Number 17. Frankie Kazarian. A fine wrestler he may be, but Frankie Kazarian was barely in Bullet Club for a cup of coffee. His temporary allegiance began after backstage stabbing Christopher Daniels, his longtime partner, last February, but it was all a ruse. Kazarian swerved Bullet Club the following month, turning on Adam Cole during a Ring of Honor Championship match with Daniels, effectively handing his pal the belt. A fun angle, but the 27-day time frame prevents Kazarian from placing higher. Number 16. Cody Hall Scott Hall was one of the most charismatic and engaging performers of his generation. His son Cody? Well, he isn't. Introduced as a Bullet Club trainee back in January 2015, Hall played a familiar pin-eating role until he was injured while catching a Matt Jackson dive at Invasion Attack 2016. He never returned, and the company quietly released him nine months later. Number 15. Hangman Page This guy is a double serving of unbuttered toast washed down by a glass of room temperature tap water. Fine in a pinch, but dull. So, so dull. Page is comfortably Bullet Club's least interesting member. He's a bang average brawler stuck in his stablemate's shadows. A former Ring of Honor six-man tag team champion, yes, those are a real thing, Hangman is still young but shows little upside. 14. Chase Owens A solid indie journeyman, Chase Owens is a New Japan part-timer who plays a lowly role but always works hard. If Chase is around, he's usually taking the fall for one of the club's bigger names. A shame, as he's an underrated worker with bags of talent, but at 27 years old, there's still a chance they'll eventually push him. Number 13. Yujiro Takahashi this cheeky little scamp joined Bullet Club in April 2014, becoming the first ever Japanese wrestler to do so. He's a basic American-style heel who sticks out for his simplicity. This wouldn't be the case if you weren't surrounded by some of the world's finest, but this is New Japan, where perfectly mediocre puts you in the lowest percentile. Yujiro's goofy ladies' man gimmick allows him to show some charisma, and I guarantee you'll enjoy his work more if you just imagine he's drunk all the time. Seriously, look at that face and tell me he isn't off his nut. Number 12. Tangaloa a disaster when he debuted, it took New Japan months to wash the vile stench of sports entertainment from Tangaloa, but the former Camacho has now become a valued roster member. His Gorillas of Destiny tag team are inconsistent, but often a highlight. Teaming with Tamatonga, his adoptive brother, suits Loa, and with three IWGP Tag Team Championship reigns to their name, G.O.D. have become stables. Don't watch his matches with kids around, bro. The man's so sweary, he makes Gordon Ramsay look like a priest. Number 11. Adam Cole NXT star Adam Cole was with Bullet Club for 12 months until May 2017, when he was unceremoniously dumped from the group after signing for WWE. It was a memorable conclusion to an unremarkable run. Cole was a hit in America, but not in Japan, where he struggled to get over. In contrast, he was a massive Ring of Honor star who did a good job heading up the club's US branch, and his domestic appeal is undeniable. A two-time Ring of Honor champion as a club member, Cole's sad inability to make a mark in his stable's home promotion ultimately holds him back.
Number 10, Doc Gallows. The former Festus was brought in as Carl Anderson's tag team partner in late 2013. Gallows' loud personality meshed perfectly with Bullet Club's Western stylings, but he was never a particularly exciting wrestler. Doc was okay in New Japan, but his deficiencies were always apparent in singles matches. Still, he played a prominent role during one of the stable's hottest periods, and for that, he finishes in the top 10. Number 9, Marty Skrull. Slick in-ring skills, electric charisma, a unique gimmick, Skrull has it all, and that's why he's one of wrestling's hottest commodities. Only a disaster will prevent the villain from becoming a huge international star, but he's still making a mark in Japan. Regardless, he's now a former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, and somebody that New Japan are clearly fond of as he's always presented as one of Bullet Club's key performers. Marty has already won the Japanese crowds over and possesses more star power than any club member not named Kenny Omega. Expect him to surf in 2018. Number 8, Cody Rhodes. As the biggest draw in independent wrestling today, Cody Rhodes is a vital component of Bullet Club's modern success. The former Ring of Honor champion was entrusted with headlining the first night of New Japan's G1 special in USA last summer, delivering the performance of a lifetime against IWGP heavyweight champion and six-star match machine Kazuchika Okada. He repeated the feat with another banger against Kota Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom 12 and looks set for a high-profile feud with Kenny Omega. Getting over in Japan hasn't been easy, but he's slowly getting there and warring with the cleaner will help to no end. Number 7, Tama Tonga. This spicy boy calls himself the Bullet Club OG, and he isn't wrong. Haku's firstborn was a day one member. He remains partisan five years later and is widely considered one of New Japan's most underrated wrestlers. Tama's boa constrictor-like movements and buttery smoothness make him a unique performer, but he hasn't yet made it to the next level, having spent the whole of his career on the midcard. He primarily competes as a tag wrestler these days and will never be a main eventer, but Tama Tonga is Bullet Club through and through. Number 6, Bad Luck Valley. He may occasionally dress like a dad on holiday, but Bad Luck Valley is a vital part of Bullet Club's legacy. It was his partnership with Prince Devitt that kicked the whole thing off, and while the underboss has always been a limited wrestler, his importance cannot be denied. His Bad Luck Fall finisher is one of the company's most protected moves, beating him is treated as a big deal, and he's often put into high-stake matches against top stars. Fale always scores a few major scalps in the G1 Climax tournament, and while his limitations mean he'll never be the guy, he remains an effective bruiser. Number 5, The Young Bucks. Matt and Nick Jackson are the world's most recognisable tag team. Their cocky attitudes, gift-friendly matches and sheer marketing genius have made them megastars, and their importance to Bullet Club's current success is palpable. In the ring, the Bucks are seven-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, but they're even more important away from it. Episodes of Being the Elite routinely break 100,000 views on YouTube, and it played a huge role in Bullet Club's recent merchandise explosion. Sure, they're often more dedicated to the Elite, their subgroup with Kenny Omega, but few have done more to help raise the club's profile in recent years. Number 4, AJ Styles. What? The most individually successful Bullet Club member in history at number 4? Who is this Scottish idiot and when did he lose his mind? Well, let's break this down. AJ Styles is indeed Bullet Club's most successful member, and the only man to ever hold the IWGP heavyweight title while part of the group. The phenomenal one was continually, well, phenomenal in the ring, and was the Bullet Club's co-leader after Prince Devitt's departure. A strong argument, but on the other hand, Styles' Bullet Club run never felt completely natural. An odd fit from the start, it was like he'd been shoehorned into the group, and his debut angle went down like a turd in a punch bowl. He eventually overcame this dud of an introduction, but it still hurts his legacy. It's impossible to fit AJ into the top three for these reasons. He may have been the best wrestler in the world at the time, but he never embodied Bullet Club's identity. Number 3, Kenny Omega. Bullet Club's current leader has been with the group since 2014, but didn't seize control until two years later. He has since spearheaded a huge surge in popularity and tasted plenty of individual success himself. Last year's six-star trilogy with Kazuchika Okada made Kenny the most buzzworthy wrestler on the planet. On top of this, he became the first ever IWGP United States Champion last year. Omega is great, but there's one thing holding him back. Bullet Club have never been as splintered as they are today. There's a big gap between Kenny's group, the elite, and everyone else. And while previous leaders always presented Bullet Club as a dominant, united front, Omega has struggled to hold it together. Number 2, Carl Anderson. Finn Balor henchman he may be, but Carl Anderson was Mr. Bullet Club. Another day one member, his loyalty never wavered. Nobody else better embodied what the group was all about. And while Machine Gun was never a big single star, he was a perfect image of the stable's identity. Loud, brash, and as cocky as they come, 
Anderson wasn't just a key player between the ropes, but the group's mouthpiece for a long, long time. AJ Styles became Bullet Club's ace after debuting, but it was Anderson who assumed Devitt's old leadership role, though he primarily worked as a tag wrestler. When Devitt left, nobody was more important in building, developing and maintaining the stable's original outlaw spirit. Bullet Club lost its heart and soul when Anderson went to WWE. They're more popular now, but their identity is nowhere near as defined as when Machine Gun was around, and they miss his personality dearly. Number 1. Prince Devitt Bullet Club was formed as an extension of this man's alliance with Bad Luck Valley in May 2014. They soon became New Japan's top heel stable, and while the future Finn Balor's leadership lasted less than a year, it still hasn't been bettered. Devitt wasn't as individually successful as AJ Styles or Kenny Omega, but he was New Japan's truest heel. He had unreal chemistry with his stablemates, particularly Fally, Carl Anderson and Tama Tonga, who formed Bullet Club's original core. This allowed Devitt to unleash levels of charisma non existent in WWE, and he completely transformed what it meant to be a villain in New Japan. Devitt and his boys changed everything by bringing American style heel antics to the forefront. Japanese audiences hated this, and it was all done under the Irishman's watch. An amazingly creative performer, Prince Devitt is the most natural leader the club have ever had, and they've never been so loved by the crowd as they were when he was around. Combine this with his world class in ring ability, and you have Bullet Club's greatest member. Right now. Mackenzie puts away Priestley. Well, the Defiant Women's Division, clearly one of the hottest women's divisions on the planet. Billy Wood calling the shots on chin reaction. That's huge news. Five on five. Five IPW guys will fake five Defiant guys. Shoe, bring whoever you want, mate, because IPW are ready. Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. Huh. But you should like, share and subscribe below anyway. And also the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also, there's more content probably above my head. Check it out. Or don't. 50-50.